All right, I'm um, introduce myself. I'm Pam Franzella. I'm from Chicago. And I'm actually a depression glass dealer. I do not collect jadeite, but I have so many friends and so many customers that do that I really found myself falling in love with it. So whether or not it's going to end up in my own collection or not, I'm not really sure. So the first thing I want to talk about is, what is jadeite? And actually, the name jadeite was derived from, you'll have to pardon me, I'm going to read this. It's a, a Spanish phrase that means stone of the side of the mountain. And that's where they found stones like jade and other things like that with this particular color. Now, today we consider jadeite to be an opaque green glassware. There's three main companies that made it. You have Jeanette, McKee, and Fire King. I'll talk about some of the other companies that are similar, but those are, the, those are your three main companies. And as you can see, Fire King is a little more prolific than a lot of the companies, so, but we'll get to that. So the first company that came out with it was McKee. And these pieces here are all McKee. And you can see there's a little bit of color variation between the three companies. And sometimes it makes it easier to figure out which one it is by the color. So in the 1930s, they called this color Skokie Green. And basically, they took green glass scraps and added this brand new opaque material that they were using to come up with this color. So they came out first. And then Jeanette said, oh, look, they're making money off this stuff. I think we're going to try this. So they came out um, in 1932. Now, Fire King didn't come out until the 1940s. Even though they made the most pieces, the most patterns, people liked that better, it, they were later. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the McKee. One thing I want to mention is the pieces that were made prior to the war will glow under a black light. None of the Fire King will glow, and I meant to bring my black light. I don't know if anyone has one with them, but um, I, mine's in my car. But um, these, some of these pieces, if they were made prior to World War II, will glow under a black light because there is some uranium in them. After World War II, or during World War II, they stopped using it because they needed it for the war effort. So first we're going to talk about McKean. And I'll just give you some ideas. They basically did pieces for the house, things like shakers and canisters and reamers and other things. They only made one dinnerware pattern. And this is called Laurel. And you can see the variation between the colors. So they decided they were going to go more towards shakers and canisters and things of that nature. Because this is what the households needed. Spices were very expensive. So you kept your sugar, your flour, your salt, and your pepper right on your stove. They made them square so they could fit closely together and not take up a lot of room. Another fascinating thing that McKee did, and basically they came up with these, you know, you're going through prohibition, you're going through the depression, they wanted to make something fun. And these are called bottoms up. And you can come up and look at everything afterwards. Basically, they were kind of doing the Hollywood style with the nude woman, and you had to take it, drink it, and drink the whole thing at one, up, one time. So they called that bottoms up. This one, I don't have a jade one, I apologize, I sold it, but they made this in the jadeite also. It's called Bottoms Down, as you can see. So, same idea, it was all going with the Hollywood glitz and glamour. Well, they had a problem. Uh, there was another company making these in more of a ceramic material, so McKee had to um, fight with them over the patent. So, the earlier ones they made had split legs. You can look closely, you can see these legs are open. After the lawsuit was settled, they came with the legs that are together. So these are the earliest, and these are next. But we're still talking around the same time frame. Um, they all carry a patent date on them. If it doesn't have the patent date, it's a reproduction. All bottoms up will have a number here. It's like 77725. But because they're currently making these, so you want to be careful if you're looking at them to make sure they have a patent date on them. And they made them plain, and then they made them with these, just so they would sit nicer in your cupboard. 
And then once again with the shakers, we have different shapes. We have the Roman arch. We have uh, vertical lines, the plain ones. You can see there's a variation in color. They made a light one, they made a dark one, etc. So then we'll talk about Jeanette. Jeanette was the next company. Jeanette made no dinnerware. Everything they made was for the kitchen or for the bathroom and things like that. Oh, and one thing I want to show you. I have, this is a Jeanette orange reamer. This is a McKee lemon. Now they both made lemon and they both made orange. But if you can see, McKee doesn't have any lines on it, whereas the Jeanette has the lines. And that's how you tell the difference between the two. This particular one has a mark on it. McKee marked a lot of their pieces. Jeanette did not. You have the canisters. Whenever you see the ribs like this, you'll know it's Jeanette. You've got the square canisters. This particular one I'm going to try to put under the lights. so you can see. They did take their floral pattern. It's, it's too close, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they carried over their floral pattern onto the tops of some of their shakers, yet they only made a few pieces, experimental pieces that we've seen in the, in the floral jadeite, but they never made it as a general line. They made the little spice jars. This particular piece has the original red pepper label on it. Um, the little spice jars, let me see what else I have here. Okay, now they made a drippings jar, and I don't have one, but it, it has the ribs on it and it has a little lid on it. And what I thought was fascinating, you would put it on your stove and you would put fat, oil, and grease in it, and you would make soap out of it after you were done. But during the war, they were asking women to save it for them, and they were using it to make um, explosives. <laughs> So everybody's household had one of these grease jars in them, and I'm sure they got broken, and that's why we don't see many of them today. So, all right, now I'm going to go into Fire King because, just because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> so Fire King started in the 1940s. They're basically, oh, I want to talk about one thing. We talked about this being Skokie. Then we talk about this being Jadeite, and then we talk about this being Jadeite. Well, they changed their name to Jadeite, J-A-D-I-T-E. They had the name Jadeite, J-A-D-E-I-T-E. -E. They had the name Jadeite, J-A-D-E-I-T-E. <laughs> so you'll see the variations all over. Um, you know, most of the time we just call it Jadeite itself. But, um, so anyway, I'm going to talk about the Fire King dinnerware lines first. I would say the most popular in today's world is the restaurant wear. They made home use, they made dinnerware for home use and restaurants. These restaurants, I have bought numerous groupings of these out of churches, out of you know the restaurants, things like that. This is probably the most popular piece of of jadeite depression glass right now. And I will go into the later why the Japanese like it so much but the Japanese love jadeite. So you have a lot of variations. You can feel the thickness of the pieces. They made plates, they made a numerous size. They made like five and a half, six and a half. Um, they made bread and butter, salad, lunch, dinner. <coughs> then they made a 10 and a, a three quarter inch plate, which is about this big. I've never seen one in person. Last value I saw for one was like $1,000. <laughs> Measure your plates. <laughs> You find one that's over 10 inches, and it's restaurant wear. It's really, really good. So the other thing that's really popular right now in restaurant wear are the mugs. This is your standard D-handled mug. As you can see, the handle looks like a D. This is your C-handled mug. See the thickness, the difference in it? Then they made a slimmer one. This is called a chocolate mug because you didn't drink as much chocolate. Now I'm going to put these under and see if we can get a good picture. Because these two look identical, correct? If you notice this one, it has a completely flat bottom. 
The other one has an indentation across here. This was called a shaving mug, and that's what they would make. So when you're looking at value, this is your most common. These are the next hardest to find. And then, for some reason, these are more difficult, and these are the most difficult to find. So your pricing is going to go accordingly to how rare. But once again, the Japanese love these mugs. So, so we have the restaurant wear, and then we have a lot of different types of dinner, dinner wear. The other one that you'll see all over the place is Jane Ray. All of you, if you collect any, you're familiar with it. It's got the rings around it. They made numerous pieces in it. Cups, bowls, saucers. There's some really rare pieces in there. But, um, oh, and I wanted to show you part of the restaurant line, just to show you what they would do is they would make so many different types of pieces. Like this is a regular platter. This is what they call a football platter to try to get people to buy as much as possible. Now, Fire King was very good at um, marketing back then because I call this, oh, this one's, sorry, that one's a um, restaurant. I call this oatmeal glass because the little berry bowls, you would find them in oatmeal dishes. And they would, that's how they would get people to buy their products. Sorry, Gary. To buy their products, they would put the dishes inside of oatmeal, cereal, all different things. You know, it's a lot of the different depression glass patterns. You know, they would try, they'd make five part plates. They'd make three part plates. They'd make, they'd make plates with a circle here. So, you know, anything they could do to get people to use their dishes. Um, so we have Jane Ray as a pattern. There's another pattern called Alice. Looks like Jane Ray from a distance. But if you look closely, it's got nice little flowers around the outside. And please, afterwards, feel free to come up and touch and feel anything that you want. Another pattern they made was called Three Bands. Once again, it's got a sheave of, um, this, I'm sorry, this is sheaves of wheat. It's got a sheaf of wheat on there. These are very, very difficult to find. Then they went with a square pattern called Charm. I have a cup, and then I have a plate. This is very, very, very popular right now. The other thing is, you know, we have two pieces. This is called a bead and bar pitcher. This is called a milk pitcher. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you the difference. This one's $75 right now. This one's $185. They made a lot more of these than they made of these. And when I talk about price, I only tell you the prices just so you can see the comparison because prices are all collectability and rareability. So if everyone wants one of these and there's only 10 of them but there's 100 of these, of course the prices are going to be higher. The other thing they did, of course you have, this is a very, very hard to find picture. They um, made ball pictures. Now, if you look in some of the books, which I have here, you're more than welcome to, they made a variety. They made a swirl one. They made one with circles. And those are almost impossible to find in today's market. We also have vases. We have little bowls that look like maple leaves. I think they targeted this to the Canadians because they did sell a lot in Canada. Um, then they went into the refrigerator dishes. Now, I'm going to talk about, because of the lid on this, and those of you who aren't familiar with Philby, Philby is um, part of the Fire King line that they used on some items. And what I found fascinating about this is Phil B. was actually a gentleman who worked for Anchor Hawking. Hazel Marie Weatherman, who wrote one of the earliest Depression Glass books, knew that none of these pieces had names, so she named them. She named Jane Ray after somebody she knew. She named Phil B. after Phil B. And so if you ever look in Florence's books, Jean Florence's books, he and Hazel did not get along at all, okay? So she made up all these names. He would always put them in quotes because he didn't like the idea of her naming them all. But Philby is, is you'll see it a lot on top of the refrigerator dishes. There's a mug out there with a Philby design on it. If you ever see it, buy it. The last one I saw on eBay was $685. Um, and then they made smaller refrigerator dishes. They made a set of these that'd be too small and then a large one. And of course they have the Fire King mark on there. 
And I can talk more about the marks, too. I have some information that, because we can actually date them to figure out what was made in the 40s, what was made in the 50s, what was made in the 60s. So when we talk about mixing bowls, this is a mixing bowl set in the original box. And I got onto a website, a, a Facebook page with some friends, and I said, OK, what should I do with it? It's never been opened. <laughs> Two thirds of the people say, leave it. <laughs> Sell it as it is. The other said, oh, open it. And I'm like, so I haven't decided. I'll wait and see what customer wants it, and they can make their decision. But this is a five-piece bowl set. And once again, if you look, it says heat proof Jada. Nowhere on there does it say Squirrel, because Squirrel is the name that we collectors and Hazel Murray Weatherman have made up for it. Now, they sold this in a four-piece bowl set. But for a while, they added the fifth one. Same exact piece, but for every, oh, 100 of these, I find one of these. So these bowls, so you need to look. When you're out looking and you think you got yourself a little berry bowl, a little chili bowl, this is a swirl mixing bowl. And they're running around $250, $225, something like that. They love mixing bowls. These are the Swedish Modern. It's, you know, this is a set of four. I just brought two examples. So you can see them. These are what they call splash proof. There's a set of four of these. And for some reason, you can find three of them. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the second one. There's a smaller one that fits in there. And they're very difficult to find. We don't know if they sold them in sets of three, like you know they did with this four set, and then added the other one, or whatever. But there's a set of four. This is called Colonial Kitchen. Colonial, excuse me. It has a band across it. There's a set of these. Um, there's another set of mixing bowls called Beaded Edge. As you can see, it has a rim across it. There's a set of four bowls. Once again, the largest one in this is, is difficult to find. And that could also be that they used it. You know, this stuff was used, and the, the other things got broken. Now, this is a very good example. This is a batter pitcher. And most collectors I know have one because they're very, very useful. So as you went along, they had problems with the moles and they would break. So if you look at the variation on the top, can you see the difference in the? That all has to do with them changing the mold. And probably if we looked on the bottom, these are similar dates, but they were made very differently. Okay, This is another cute little piece. It's called Leaf and Blossom. It's perfect as a, a mayo set or whatever. But I think they were very smart. They made things that people would like, people would use. Once again, you know, anything to make money. Oh, look, we made a skillet. Oh, people really liked it. Let's make one with two sides. <laughs> these are easier to find. Now, neither of these are easy, but this is easier to find than this one. You're all familiar with the bubble. They made a little bit of jade icon bubble. I don't see much of it, but this is very popular. And again, you know, just a whole, whole variety of things. Um, okay, so now let me just get back to my notes and make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, I do want to mention something. See how this canister has the vertical ribs? If you ever see one with horizontal ribs, buy it. Because there's very few of them out there. They are running around $1,000, and they'll sell immediately. So just a good tip on that one. Um, OK, so we talked about the Japanese. So I have a lot of Japanese customers. So I ask them, why do they like Jada? I do a show in Detroit, and we have about 150 Jada women come through the door. And they just love Jada. So much so. These are Japanese mat these are Japanese price guides for Jada. See, it's all written in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And like I said, please come up and look at these. They start from the back and they work their way up. I have no idea what they say, but <laughs> <laughs> so they asked me why. So I asked her why they liked it. And I guess they had some kind of 
television shows from like the 1950s over there that featured jadeite, and they just kind of fell in love with it. Jade is a very um, um, lucky color, too, for the Japanese. But they found that they liked this creamy green so much, and they liked the shape, and they liked the feel, and it just has become almost a, a national phenomenon over there. There are, you know, I'll go somewhere and I'm watching gentlemen buying jade out and, buy and, and just sending it back to Japan. Um, mostly they like household goods. They said they're very good about that. Oh, one other thing. They have a lot of earthquakes. And they said, when this stuff falls off the shelf, it doesn't break. <laughs> so, all right, now, we're going to talk about the bane of everybody in this world's glass world, reproductions. So. Classic reproduction. If you look at the color, nobody made a cake plate. Martha Stewart made a cake plate. Um, but you know, I can't fault Martha Stewart because she collected jadeite and she started this craze. When she started making her reproductions, it got people interested not only in the reproductions, but in the earlier pieces. This one is kind of fun because I asked somebody today, I said, Okay, which one is the reproduction and which is the real one? They said, this is the real one because it looks more like the color. This is the reproduction. This is the real one because Jeanette made it. And I, I don't have any idea who made that, but. You know, first off your key, if you see new lids like this, there's a good shot it's a reproduction. You can just see how shiny and new and, you know. No one made this. So is it a reproduction? It's really what they call a fantasy piece. Is it made to trick you? If you know enough, it's not going to trick you because they didn't make this. They didn't make this. They didn't make this. Ah, they made these. Once again, brand new lid. But I talked to a woman today who's looking for a lid. And I said, well, maybe you can find a new one. And put the, you know, put the new lid on it. So you may be able to find an old one with a new lid on it because they did rust away. If you know your colors, if you know your glass, and know your dealer. That's what I always say. Just if you go to a reputable dealer, they will not sell you, you know, a thousand dollar rolling pin, you know, that's gonna be a reproduction. So crisscross, they made that. Hazel Atlas made that. They didn't make it in Jadeite back then. Oh, and there was another reproduction. There's new um, shakers out there marked Hazel Atlas. Hazel Atlas made no shakers in Jadeite early. So. <coughs> so now, they came out with reissues in the year 2000. And what they did is they took the regular moles, Restoration Hardware actually requested that Anchor Hawking make these. They came out with the de-handled mugs. On the bottom, it says 2,000 on them. They were made in Brazil. They're kind of crappy quality. So they stopped the production. So if you come across one that says 2,000 on it, it was made in the year 2000. And they're out there now. They're on eBay. They're everywhere. Um, and there is another reissue coming out of Japan. Let me see if we can get, I don't know if I can get this to read. <clears throat> you might have to come up and look at, uh, we got it? Yeah. It's called Heritage. And look at it, it's made in Japan. Wow. And it looks just like a de-handled mug, but it has that on the bottom. So these are not made to trick. These are telling you, these are reproductions. Now, one other thing, we talked about Fire King. If I can get this up right. And then I'll talk about some of these books. Oh, can I get this? Am I going the right way? Yes. Okay. If you look at that, this is going to tell you what's on the bottom of your glass. If you have just the word fire king, you'll know it was made then. If it says oven glass, et cetera, et cetera. When you go down, you can see when something was made. So if I pick up one of my mugs over here, <coughs> And it says, oven fire, oven fire King Ware. No USA. This one was made mid to late 1940s. It says 
the same thing. Let's see if I can find one that's different. <laughs> Boy, I got a lot from the 40s. Okay, this one says Fire King Ware made in USA. So this was made from 51 to 1960. Now, I showed you the Japanese I showed you the Japanese books, but these are the reference books that I use. This is my favorite. Joe Keller and David Ross did a lot of research. They include all of the patterns in here, all of the companies in here. So you have McKee, Jeanette, Fire King. They have a nice reproduction set in the back. They came out, and they're really nice guys, too. I know them. They came out with a newer book. You can tell this one's in a lot better shape because I've only had it for a couple of weeks. Gene Florence, he did stuff on bakeware. So a lot of the later bakeware pieces are in here. His book on Fire King, then it goes into all the other patterns too besides just the um, jadeite. McKee has a really nice section just on jadeite. This kitchen book is wonderful because they'll put the reamers side by side and you can see those two look really similar. But if you look in here, it'll say, okay, well the ones with the rib is this one and that one. And of course the 40s and 50s book um, has the patterns in there. So you can go through and you can pick out all of the, you know, go through all the jadeite patterns. Now, a friend of mine gave me these just to on loan because they're almost impossible to find. These are the earliest books on jadeite. And they were done by Dale Kilgo and some other people. And they really, this is where everyone else got all their information from. And these two books, if you ever see these, they're, real, they're collector's items in themselves. So please, pick them up and call me because I want a copy of it. <laughs> All right. Um, I know I've skipped over stuff. I have a lot of glass here. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Go ahead. The piece that looks like a towel. Oh, yes. Can you tell us about Okay, so they made bathroom pieces. Once again, they're trying to be very functional. So this would be a towel bar rack. And then this one... These are the ones you would slide, you know the ones that open up in three pieces and you would hang your, like a little yeah. drying rack? That's what those were. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure who made this partic these particular ones. They made drinking glasses for the bathroom. They made all kinds of stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? I mean, I have people that have um, done their bathrooms over in jadeite. It's really cool. They're, in fact, uh, Max Miller has a friend. He goes, I need a, they have an actual shelf made out of jadeite. And he goes, you've got to find me a shelf. I said, I can't find one. Oh, one more thing before I forgot. Once again, here's two different patterns. One's called swirl, one's called shell. You know, they just change them all a little bit and make more money. So, all right, yes? The reaper or juicer, I'm not sure the proper term, that has sun kissed on it, Yes. Was that made by one of these companies, or was that made by Sunkiss? Uh, the Sunkiss was made, yes, I didn't mention any of those because I didn't have any of those. Let me give you exact information before I go. There's a lot of different colors in um, Sunkiss reamers. The specifically. Okay, now, because this is what I wanted to say. McKee made the Sunkiss reamers, but according to records, at the Fenton factory, the very first Sunkiss Reamer was made by Indiana Glass. So there's been a little bit of, you would, on the, McKee usually marks theirs. So yes, I would say you should, probably the Jadeite ones were made by McKee, not Indiana, but yes. But you just have to be careful because there's reproductions of those out there too. So you want to familiarize yourself with McKee's colors. If you can get this, these colors down, you know, the two different ones, there's a light one and a dark one. Once you know those and you see the reproductions, you know right away it's not right. So. Anybody else? Yes? She said that it doesn't crack. You can drop it, it won't crack. The, I, I was, it, it will, if I drop it on the hard floor, it will crack. They oh. just, my, my Japanese friend said we like it better because it doesn't break as easily as some other stuff. So, and they have a lot of earthquakes. So she said that that you know, 
I mean, I have, it, it'll bounce on a cement floor, but if you drop it on a carpet or, a, you know, probably, at most kitchen's tile, I don't know what it would do, but it depends on how hard you throw it, so. <laughs> Do the prices continue to go up on the jadeite? That seems to be what's happening. Yes and no. Yes and no. It, it, the rarer pieces, they just keep getting harder and harder and harder to find. But once you reach a limit, then people won't spend that much money. It's just your diehard collectors. And a lot of those already have some of those pieces. But your common stuff, you know, they keep creeping up a little bit. And, oh, and I didn't really go into how the craze started, but you know, this stuff was made in the 50s and people threw it away or they threw it in their cupboards and they just didn't care about it because the color went out of vogue. And then in 1998, Martha Stewart came out and then for a while it was getting really hot and then it just died again. And then um, in 2008, there was a resurgence of it and it's been going up ever since, so. And interesting enough for me, I did a show in 2008 and I remember because I had moved from the East Coast to, to Madison, Wisconsin, and I had some jadeite, and I took it to the show, and I sold every piece of it. I'm thinking, nobody wants this stuff on the East Coast. Well, it was right when the resurgence was happening, and um, it just has been going up and up and up. So. A lot of Chinese people have um, jade as uh, jewelry. Yes. You know, like Buddha, jewelry, Buddha. Yes. And necklaces and things. I've never seen them. Uh, that for dishes and all that. Yeah, yeah, they made, yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's very similar to the Japanese. I think they have the same thing with jade. They like the color. Yeah, and, um. They love gold and jade. Yeah. I don't know about gold. Yeah. They're very popular with gold. And they grow the fried rice. All right. Uh, just another question. So you may find a piece of the jade. Let's just say it's a shaker or a canister, and the lid is gone, is shot. Yes. So um, finding reasonable replacement parts. I mean, is there it's, something you advise around that if you really want people to, ask, to use? People ask me that all the time. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> there used to be a company that made them. But we can't seem to find them anymore. Now, you know, and the, the thing is, you could take you know, one of the reproduction pieces and maybe the lid will fit on there. Okay. That's the only thing that I can say. But anymore, you go into a shop and the reproduction pieces are almost as much as, as the originals. So, yeah. <coughs> I buy broken pieces, I buy really badly stained pieces just to get the lids. Yeah, well, that's what I've done with some other kinds of items, the salt shakers. I'll buy yeah. something that's I buy the really sell. cheap, ugly salt yeah. peppers just to get a pair of good lids. It's uh -huh. the same thing. Um, and you never know if it's going to fit. So if you're going to buy a reproduction lid, always have your piece with you. Because, um, I mean, one of the dealers gets them every once in a while, but, so. And please, there's more at my booth. If you have any questions, please come see me. Um, the other thing is I'll come get my card. If you ever have a piece and you're worried about it, you think it's a reproduction, just text me a picture of it and I'll be, usually be able to tell you right away without touching it. <laughs> so. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh,